Ryan, Aaron just noted that Araldis Chapman will not be on the postseason roster and he's not with the team and there could be some disciplinary action. What have the conversations been like with either Araldis or his people during this? Yeah, the uh, obviously we have not had our official postseason roster meetings, um, but he effectively took himself out of at least this round of consideration because, uh, you know, obviously as a team, we have everybody um, who's obviously uh, part of our network here working out starting Friday and uh, he he made a decision not to show and um, so I find him um, obviously I had a conversation with him I uh, find him uh, for not being here at a mandatory workout and um, uh, Aaron Boone post work I had a conversation with him and during that conversation I wasn't a part of that you know he you know Boone made the decision just tell him to stay you know telling him just stand down and just stay home you, know, you got to be all in you know, um, you know, uh, at this time of year, um, and, uh, it's disappointing. So, uh, that he effectively made that type of decision. Um, he was due to pitch a live BP, uh, obviously to get his work in as he was competing for a spot on the roster, as well as, you know, facing our hitters to give them, you know, uh, that type of competition as we navigate the, uh, the off days between you know the wild card series and and our division series is about to start Tuesday and again I can't give any more information than that it's just disappointing so uh, so you know we're gonna have what we have here and you know, people who are competing to you know dying to be on this roster and fighting to be on this roster and and want to be on this roster and um, even though those decisions haven't been made yet uh, he again chose to be absent so. Uh, after the Texas series, he uh, we had that meet, that off day we provided for everybody in between, and uh, he flew from Texas to Miami, you know, uh, to spend the off day there, and then chose not to to come Friday to the to the workout. So nothing really more to add. What do you think of the matchup with the Guardians, and how do you feel like your roster stacks up? Well, we're gonna have an advanced scouting meeting, um, you know, later today. I think around two or two thirty, and uh, post workout. So I'll get a little bit more intel on these guys. We've faced them six times this year. We know how good they are. Listen, anybody in the postseason, they're really good, right? Uh, they've earned their way to be here. And, and the, the operations that have been pushed out now, whether it's Toronto or Tampa, um, you know, or St. Louis, those are top-notch, you know, uh, operations and top-notch teams that, you know, are more than capable as well. So to be in the postseason, um, you've done a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, to be able to advance, obviously, you're doing a lot. And so I know that Cleveland's got great pitching, um, both in the, out of the rotation and the bullpen. I know they got a great defensive team. Um, they're young, they're athletic, um, and they're run by, you know, one of the game's, you know, all-time great managers in Terry Francona and, and uh, one of the game's best executives, you know, under the leadership with his staff of, uh, um, you know, Chris Antonetti. So... You know, um, we know we got our hands full. There's a lot of respect we have for the Guardians and their operation uh, from top to bottom, and so we'll learn a lot more uh, about them here later this afternoon um, as we continue to get our team ready for Tuesday night. Over to the left, Brendan, and then Lindsay. Cash, Boone said that Chapman gave an, an uh, unacceptable excuse as to why he didn't show up Friday. What was that excuse? Uh, you know, I wasn't part of his conversation. So um, I know I had my own conversation uh, with with Araldis, and um, it wasn't an excused absence. You know, um, he obviously was due. Everybody was due to be here for a workout every day, uh, and you know all the specialty coaches, you know, communicate with their you know uh, responsible player group about what their coming day's work is going to be. And you know, Matt Blake had communicated with Araldis about his live BP on Friday, and. Um, you know, our interpreter who was on the phone with me interpreting with, uh, with Araldis, um, you know, he was in communication with Araldis sharing, you know, it's Marlon Abreu sharing and reiterating when he was supposed to be here. So there's no, you know, listen, there was no legitimate reason why he wasn't here. Um, you know, he's employed, he's due to provide work. Uh, postseason roster hadn't been set yet. We hadn't even had our meetings yet. We still haven't had that meeting yet. And, uh, he chose not to come. So. And what did you see out of DJ LeMayhew the last week or so uh, of the regular season? I see somebody that's fighting, you know, to be a part of things. You know, he's obviously, uh, 
compromised with an injury, and uh, he's trying to put himself in the best position to show what what he is capable of doing. You know, all by all by limited, and um, and then you know he recognizes and understands that puts the onus on on us on our end, whether it, you know with, uh, from from my chair to uh, more importantly our manager and our coaching staff about is there a fit? Can he contribute? You know, what can he provide? Um, so he's, you know, certainly uh, competing uh, and showing everything that he's made of um, because he wants to be a part of a winner and he wants to be in a position to contribute. I don't think he or anybody doesn't want to be a part of something if they can't help. Um, but uh, that determination hasn't been made yet. But uh, but what I've seen so far is someone fighting, you know, uh, which I appreciate, you know, so. Chris. Given the un uncertainty of the bullpen, do you feel like you have enough with that group to advance as far as you'd like? We're going to find out. You know, um, I feel like we just have to, have to feel comfortable that whoever's, you know, on this roster is all in, right? You know, they're laser focused on whatever I can do, whether I'm the best in the world at it or if I, you know, uh, I've you know, fought my way into this mix as part of this group. That whenever you know Aaron Boone and and uh, calls upon them to you know play a role that they they're going to give everything they they're capable of giving and there's no hesitancy there's no distractions there's no you know our laser focus is to try to find any which way possible to to beat Cleveland and um, so we're going to find out I think you know we have a lot of talent in that in that room um, you know thankfully we. We've got some guys coming back from injuries. Certainly some of them pitched very little towards the end when they gave, came back off their IL stints, um, but they're healthy. And so uh, ultimately it'll be, you know, uh, an interesting roster discussion that we are to have soon. Uh, the reason we haven't had those yet is because of our workouts here and there's certain things we want to see, certain information we need, need to get, whether it's from our training staff, our medical staff, uh, by what these players obviously uh, are able to provide here in the, the coming days. So, but I'll feel com I'll feel confident with whatever we have because I know you know we have a good group in there and they're really talented. So, Ron and Eric, was Raldis's reasoning essentially that it looks like I'm not going to be on the roster for the division series, so that's why I didn't show up? I, I don't want to speak for Raldis. Um, you know, I, I had my conversation with him, um, and I can say I've had a I've had conversations with Araldis in season, uh, as well as our coaching staff in season, as well as, as, well as our manager. So, um, it's unfortunate that he wasn't here Friday. Um, clearly disappointing, uh, but at the same time, not surprised by how things have started to play out over the over the course of the season. So. Um, it was surprising at first, like a little shocking, but then after the shock went, wore off, it's, you know, when you add everything up, uh, it's not surprising. You know, there's some questions about whether he's been all in or not, you know, for, for a little while and he's maintained verbally that he's in, but at times actions don't, you know, don't match those words. So, so when he didn't show on Friday, obviously it was at first, yes, there's a lot of, a lot of people upset and, and caught off guard, but then. After that, we're off. You know, the focus is on the guys we have here currently, and uh, that's what we're going to focus on. I'm trying to remember, has there ever been another player who didn't show during your time here? No. Uh, Eric? Brian, how, is it a concern, or how much of a concern is it not having a set closer going into the postseason? You know, um, well, our hope is that our set closer is going to be Holmes, but uh, but I know that we've been forced to mix and match. So I guess in fairness uh, to your question about what we've typically had going in is a, you know, uh, a direct line of getting the ball to a very specific person and, and that current situation's in question. Um, so, but we we've been forced to, to mix and match here along the way. And we've had a number of different uh, players show what they're capable of. And uh, so I think, I think, uh, you know, Aaron Boone with Matt Blake, uh, as well as Mike Harkey and Desi, you know, relying upon also, you know, Mendy's 
contributions in that dugout with Tanner Swanson too is is just what are the matchups? You know, um, who's available that day? What lane is the best for this particular guy? They'll do all their work like they always do. They'll line it up and and then whoever he you know chooses to pick, you know, it's going to be the way to go. And hopefully it's enough. So you know, I noticed last night and. You know, in a game, you know, with our crosstown rivals, the the Mets, you know, Showalter drew on, you know, currently the best closer in the game in, in Diaz, right? And they called him in the seventh inning. Yeah, uh, and so that meant somebody else was gonna have to help close out the game, regardless of the run differential at the time and you know, for the eighth and ninth inning. And so, you know, in postseason it's all different and every day plays out differently. And, you know, you saw a game yesterday in Cleveland where it went what, fifteen innings. You know, and every inning was a closer. Whoever you either team had out there was trying to close it. You know, uh, yeah, it was, well, you know, obviously Cleveland's end. You know, because they, they could have the walk off, but, but, uh, and that they were calling on different casts of characters, whether it was starters coming out of the pen or, or relievers you're used to seeing. But every inning was high leverage, and ultimately that's the the true case is postseason. Every inning is high leverage, whether you're starting the game or trying to finish the game one way or the other. Each and every inning is high leverage. So. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's not going to matter. You know, but uh, that's how we are set up currently, and that's uh, how we're going to play it. And then the separate talk of it, how much discussion behind the scenes was there of starting somebody other than Garrett in Game One? Uh, you know, you'd have to ask Aaron Boone that. You know, Aaron, you know, as a manager, he decides. He, did, these he didn't answer it, so I figured. Oh, I'd... <laughs> I mean, listen, I think, I think our, our, I think the one thing I can represent is that there's a lot of thought and con uh, and conversation that goes into every decision he makes. He relies on, on uh, you know, his staff. I think we have a great coaching staff. I think Boone's done an amazing job, and I think he puts all the work in that's necessary, and then he comes up with a decision that, that uh, he feels is best uh, to help this franchise, you know, match up at least this next round and and hopefully rounds beyond that. But uh, But I can tell you a lot of thought went into it regardless, you know who to go with one, who should go two, who should go three. And, and, um, and, you know, he's got his reasons on it, but I, you know, I feel really good about our starting rotation, you know, no matter who we deploy. Lindsay. Ash, what are, what are the other events that led you to question whether or not Earl, this was really all in this year? I'm not going to go through it other than, uh, you know, it's, is what I said. So, I mean, uh, I'll just leave it at that. And, you know, I, he's, Obviously, had a great career. Um, really talented. Uh, most of uh, most of his uh, um, you know time with us thus far has been exemplary, and um, you know this year's a struggle. And obviously, dealing when you're used to being you know superhuman, and then you deal with adversity. You know, uh, obviously, I think people deal with it differently. And you know, this year was a struggle for him. And um, at times, you saw the flashes of. Uh, there it is. It's it, and then there's other times it you know disappeared and you know he was fighting through it. I'm sure and um, uh, but it doesn't make you know this game's not easy. But it, you know you don't need to make it harder by again not showing up at a mandatory workout and you know for yourself as you compete for postseason as well as for your teammates who are you know in there right now fighting um, you know uh, to be ready when called upon and, and to try to put themselves in the best position so they can have success for us and for our city and for our fan base. Uh, that's the job. And um, he chose not to be a part of that as a Friday for whatever reason. So, Brian. Brian, now that Aaron Judge's regular season is in the books, um, you know, what do you think allowed him to take his game to an, another level this year? Why do you think he was able to do that? I mean, he's a he's a great player, you know, uh, who bet on himself, and you know, it's the all-time best bet, right? You know, the way he, you know, uh, navigated the season. You know, um, obviously he was healthy, and you know what he's capable of when he's healthy. He's always putting up huge numbers when he stays healthy, and and now he's shown he's stayed healthy now for a number of years. And but it's a remarkable accomplishment. You know, it was very special to watch, uh, first and foremost for his mom and dad. And, and his wife, so his immediate family, um, but obviously it captivated the entire baseball world, um, you know. And obviously, doing it while you're on a team, you know, that's winning 99 games and competing for a postseason berth and uh, and for a division title, and it just made it that much more special uh, for this franchise and for our fans. So, um, 
really uh, it was a great gift that he gave to the industry and to our fan base uh, for whatever whatever what he was able to accomplish so it was, it was amazing to watch you talk about the bet that he placed on himself obviously there's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow where do you stand with that what is what is your next move yeah, there's a pot of gold there. You know, I, I get, it's yet to be determined what the gold, how much it weighs, but it's a pot of gold, no doubt about it. So, you know, um, good for him. You know, um, you know, it was a, it was already a big pot, and uh, obviously it'll be bigger. But uh, you know, he's put himself in an amazing position to have a lot of choices, and and clearly, obviously, you know, we'd like to uh, to win the day on that discussion, and that's obviously for another day. Um, but. You know, we said that before the season. We said that many times during the season. And, you know, if you need to hear it again, I'll say it again. Yeah, of course, we'd love to have Aaron Judge back as a New York Yankee. And, um, but that's all for another day. Take a couple more. Dan. Uh, was the uh, tattoo, the leg tattoo, part of the issue with, with Chapman, but that the decision to have that during the season? Was that a problem? I mean, it was unfortunate. You know, I don't recommend, I, I certainly hope that, all athletes and all sports choose not to do, you know, get uh, ink put on in season in, you know, during their uh, uh, playing seasons, because there's always the risk of having a uh, infection, which would take you offline. And, you know, that happened. Um, obviously he didn't make that happen on purpose. I don't think it, it's a wise decision to, for any athlete to get ink, but no, uh, that is not, you know, that, that was frustrating to lose access to him for a period of time. Uh, but at the time that was going on, our biggest focus was for his health because it was a serious infection at the time. And, and, uh, until it gets contained, you don't know how serious it could be. So you wanted to make sure that he got all the, the best medical care possible. So he healed up properly and it didn't become complicated and, and cause other issues. So thankfully that resolved over time in a, in a, in a healthy way for him, uh, and his future. Um, but, uh, it wasn't a great decision. Um, and hopefully that circumstance will give pause to anybody um that's an athlete uh you know worldwide regardless of sport of uh, you know i know ink is very popular and and you know amongst you know many people and you know i think just time and place when you choose to decide to 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 go ahead and get some uh put on you you know you wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it in season ever for anybody and with Judge, I mean, coming off the season that he had, is there? It seems almost impossible to to see him leave this team. Do you have that in your head that that that's a possibility that he could end up somewhere else after the season? I mean, when they, in you know, uh, earned the right to free agency back in you know, uh, what was it, seventies? So when that 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 was a game changer. So and since that time, many a uh, many of players left, you know, and gone somewhere else. So, um, so free agency gives people the ability to have, you know, control of their decisions of where, what's best for them and their family and, and where they want to be moving forward based on a lot of information that, you know, they'll be gathering. So, um, so I think that history since the seventies and since the advent of free agency shows that, you know, players have changed organizations, um, you know, but, Certainly, you know, we always compete to try to keep what we would like to keep. And um, and in some cases, we're successful. In other cases, we're not. We always try to compete and try to take free agents from elsewhere. And sometimes we've had a lot of success there. And other times we haven't. But uh, but it's part of the market pl uh, process. So that's, again, off for another day. So uh, Last one, Matthew. Aaron mentioned that he's not ready to rule Chapman out for the ALCS or the World Series should you advance. Do you feel like that's fair to the other players who you mentioned are, you know, dying to be on this roster that someone who no show to playoff workout could potentially make the roster over them? You know, I I, <clears throat> I had my conversation with Araldus and his agent, several with his agent and then and with Araldus Chapman as well. I also strategically and purposely left a decision um with the manager in charge of his players in his clubhouse, you know, so the conversation that Aaron Boone had post workout on Friday with Aroldis, I wasn't a part of. Um, I didn't hear. I wasn't on the other end listening. Or, uh, like, I, if if I was, I would have identified myself being on the call. So, Booney called Aroldis, whether it was from his office or from home, I don't know where, and had a conversation. And from that conversation, he called me and said, 
that he made a decision that he told him after that conversation, he told him to stay home for this round. Don't come up now. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, we could have mandated him being up here for Saturday and then Sunday and then Monday and, you know, and see if we, you know, if he put himself in a different position or whatever. But that conversation Boone had uh, with Earl, this um, whatever it was, um, Boone, he said, I told him to stay home and don't come. Uh, and so that was his decision and that was his authority, uh, which I support. Um, and it's also his read, I think, of what's best to your question of for this clubhouse and for, you know, the teammates that, uh, that were here Friday, uh, on time and, and, you know, going full bore into their workouts, whether it's treatment or related or, or uh, conditioning or obviously batting practice or throwing bullpens or live BPs or whatever it was supposed to be. Um, so he made that decision. Um, so I suspect it had a lot to do with factoring into, to, you know, what's fair and best, you know, for the entire group, you know, you know, rather than having somebody, you know, decide to pick and choose when they want to be in and when they don't want to be in. Um, but I don't want to speak around Boone uh, for that, but I suspect that's part of it for him. Uh, and I, it'd be understandable if it was. So, but I also, I also, know that people can make mistakes people can uh, screw up and uh, if if there is enough you know a uh, feeling of I, I made a mistake or what have you and they have those appropriate conversations and you know considerations in the future could be different you know so um, as of right now he's not on the uh, ALDS roster he's not in, he's put himself in a position not to be considered on uh, for the ALDS roster which has not even been decided yet uh, by his actions and um, if future considerations, uh, if he wants to be in position for future considerations, I think there's future conversations that probably need to take place, uh, you know, for that. So I would not rule anything out, you know. I just, I think we all just have to address the, the elephant in the room is when you go walk in there, or you're in the clubhouse, you're on the field, you're not going to see him. So, and that's the reason why. And I'd rather not have to speak to that, but you're good at what you do. You'd find out anyway, so you'll see it. Okay, Cash, thank you again for the time. Uh, that'll conclude the interview room for today.